Hello YouTube, Steve Trucker here. <laughs> sorry for the uh, sorry for the really energetic start there. Well, uh, I'd like to apologise, you know, for my leave of absence from YouTube. I didn't mean it to be so long. You may see new truck, absolute new truck here, brand spankers. We are in a DAF XF, whatever the really tall cab is keep forgetting do apologize I need to learn it at 5 30 pretty much nearly fully specced a prior warning there'll be a buzzing coming from the left perfect timing that is my blind spot buzzer it does also react to stuff anything on that side deviations in the road it's good you can live with it don't let it put you off on the down some people won't like it, some people won't mind it like myself. You kind of learn to live with it. When you get to higher speeds, it's a lot more comfortable, as they would say. Check mine's on these pull over and text the boss. Actually, we'll be a little bit naughty. We'll stop, because we're still on the customer side at the moment. Bear with me one moment, though. Being very unprofessional here. Face time out of that option. Into oh, no, 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 don't go into that. Let's go into this one. Bosh, done. Simple as that. Shut up! <laughs> now it's irritated me. I know there's bushes to my left. <laughs> it's alright. So don't let that put you off. It's a After 80 yards, bear right. Then turn left. Yep, sat nav. Um, the same sat nav system as I had before. Bear right. Then oh, turn left. This goes down there. I can get up. Thank you very much. It's on the very single track area. It's actually quite good. We met there. So they'll put up the big hill, which would have been maybe a little bit spicy. Uh, we want weight transfer mode. Yeah, and to be honest, I was a bit sceptical at first, but I've been blown away with this truck. I do apologise about the buzzing. I cannot turn that off whatsoever, okay? Just before somebody asks, you cannot turn that off. And plus also technically if you turn it off and you get caught by Vosa. You know, you could be in a weird eco mode, let's just put it into power mode. And yes, it's an automatic. So let's put it back into eco mode. So we've done the uneconomical thing just there. <laughs> well, we basically power mode will keep it in the way low and we needed every bit of power it could give. So yeah, I've, I've been blown away with this truck. It's it's, I would rank it up to next gen. Yes, there's little quirks with it, I hope it met. Like with when we pump, we have to disconnect the yellow airline because it's got an active yellow airline compared to Scandias that don't. It's probably as wide as the next gen is, so that's probably a slight neg negative, but that's also because the cab is big, and that's another positive that it's got a lot of storage in here. It's very, very, very comfortable and it's very, very quiet as well. Which leads to a very relaxing driving experience. 
and I will do a full review on this truck. But I thought I'd just talk a bit about the truck since it's all brand spanking new. It's come out of the blue for you. <laughs> you know, I only received it, what, three days ago? Or on Friday, should I say. Not, not even for, well, yeah, about three days ago. Two or three days ago, I received a... Uh, The only thing that she lacks compared to my 580 is probably on the power side. Let's take it out of the car. We're going to need more power. Power! But actually it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Because I was told but this by another driver who's perceived one. And to me, she's not too bad. Very, as I said, very comfortable to drive. I'm still a Scania fan, don't get me wrong. I still love my Scanias, but I'm growing on daft. I am, really am. And there's little, you know, there's a few issues that I found though. I'll, I'll, I'll be completely clear about it. When I got in, we've got an AirPod in here, which the boss didn't order. Don't, don't ask what happened there. So we got that as a freebie, effectively. But whoever wanted in the AirPod didn't put the correct fuse in. So I turned it on when I first got truck to see if the system's working or what. I hopped out to start moving my stuff, realised it turned off, so I thought, okay, I might be able to turn off the system or something I haven't read in the book yet. So later at night I decided to look into it, so I decided to try and turn it back on again. No, nothing. So as I said, it worked out after 45 minutes of trying to suss out, going on the website, looking at the manual and doing a lot of research on it. I found what type of fuse it should have had. So I looked for the fuse box originally thinking there must be a fuse. There's fuses in there which are all good. But I knew there should be a fuse in the fuse board somewhere. I couldn't suss out where it would be. So what I decided to do is find out what type of fuse does it take. And it's meant to be a 40 amp. Now I realised looking through the diagram there should be a 40 amp in a certain section which there wasn't. So a bit more research, but oh, that might be it. So I remove, so I look through it, and I found there's a 20 amp from where the 40 amp should have been. And yeah, the 20 amp had obviously blown. Uh, the other little thing I need to buy mention to DAF though, when I take inputs first service, it's not the end of the world, it's just because whoever put the radio system in didn't either wire this incorrectly or it's just one of those things you have to live with. That when I want to lower down the volume, it will either weighs the volume or change the tracks. Even though the track change button is to the right and a set, complete separate button. So we're going to have to tuck ourselves in here, which isn't ideal. Let's see if that's a bit awkward. Because I could wait back there, because no cars will get through. I just hope and pray a truck doesn't come down. I know you can't see what's going on. We've got traffic lights and up ahead. As I've forgotten to bring my other cameras with me this week. We also got Truck Fest in five days' time, roughly four or five days' time. It's Monday today, which Monday the 26th, I think. Today, which is the bank holiday. We're working till Tuesday. We got Wednesday off. Working Thursday. Got Friday off to get the truck ready, pick the brother up. Get, also get the truck sorted, get over to truck vest. So my plan is, is on Friday, I'll go up to Bristol, to the truck stop there, go and get, get her washed. And yes, we'll be polishing her, don't worry. But I want to take her for a good wash. I'm sorry about this, my concentration is going to be very intensified then, because it's tight as anything, as I've already led to, she is kind of wide the truck to unit <laughs> nothing extreme but it's a lot wider than a you know top line and yes I am as you probably gathered I'm blown away with the daft I did believe this at, at, at the start I thought yeah it should be a good truck but I'll still be, and actually, so far, yes, it's still very early days. 
I'm enjoying. It's very comfortable. We've got a heated air con seat, so it's air cooled or heated. So it's good for the summer, good for the winter. <laughs> the air con this truck's amazing, and that's not including the air AirPod. No, it's new, so time will tell of that. The AirPod, amazing. I've, I have used that, it has come in handy. And I found the luxury of having an AirPod not to keep on all night, because that's what a lot of drivers just think they're for, it's, it's to run all night. Yes, on some trucks, if because I open it, this truck don't think it has the uh, extra batteries on it, so you can do that. And to be honest, I didn't need it in the cab, because the cab's been kept cool all day, which meant that I park up, it's very comfortable to start off with, and I'll leave the air pop running for a little bit while I'm doing my stuff in the cab in the evening, if it's hot, like it was last night. And when I go to bed, just turn it off. And it's on that I've got a remote for it as well, which is pretty cool. So I don't even have to get up to turn it up, off. I can lay in bed, press the remote on my keys. Jobs are good one. Now it's been really useful where I stop for breaks and run into services. You know, I'll turn it on five minutes before I park. It means what I'm at services, the cab doesn't heat up whatsoever. It's still nice and cool because I like a cool environment. It's interesting this morning though, coming down to our customer near ship to Mallet, that uh, you know it's quite heavy fog today. Lots of fog. You may see out the side that's a bit foggy. Not as bad as it was earlier, I admit, but it was really bad earlier. And the amount of cars that don't have any form of lights on is shocking. You could see half of them, you know, like and you wonder why accidents happen. <laughs> you really do wonder why accidents happen. You know, I know it could be people switched off and not thinking. So I flashed for them. So, like, you know, flash, flash, you got the hint. He sort of apologised and turned his lights on. I think he realised what was meaning. Which was nice. I don't always do that, but it is kind of irritating because some cars, as I said, you can't see till last minute.com and you had pedestrians walking down tight roads like this without any form of visibility with clothes that match into the background when walking on the wrong side of the road After to start off. 300 yards, turn you right. You can't win. So we've got some more roadworks here. We've got a tractor, but it's a lot wider here. The tractor be able to wink up onto the side. Oh, yes, I know there's a sign there. I'm well aware there was a sign there. I'm really enjoying driving automatic. I'm still, I was finding myself, certainly yesterday, wanting to find the gear stick. <laughs> I'm so used to using a gear stick in the truck, you know, now, and it's just, it's like when you hop between them. But I think you have that period that you always think, I'm always thinking I'll need to be in this gear, but actually, I can do it. I can go in manual mode and do it for long, but actually, the gearbox in this has been fine. I've quite enjoyed it. It's very, it's not chilled out in a bad way. But it's a chilled out, relaxed gearbox. Unless you put it out of eco mode, then it will have a little bit of aggression to it. Or you can just manually shift it. And it it ranks probably as good as a Scania automatic, in my opinion. I don't know if it's quite as good as the I shift. After 100 yards, turn right. Turn Tom right. Mattel. It is smooth, it's, it's not too intrusive. You now and again will have a little moment. So a few weights there should be all good. We're all good. Yeah, so yet again I'm very blown away with this new truck. It says 19 reg DAF XF 530. Obviously the big tall cab. Boss added in back, back lockers as you may see. I've also got the forward standard lockers which are cool. Got a microwave in the middle. We've got a kettle system that isn't been fitted yet. So I'll need to have maybe a word daft because it has a bizarre plug at the end of it. Not where they expect that to be fitted or mounted. 
there might be a choice on where I want it fitted, so I might get on for it there or here. Or I've got myself a basic kettle for the moment, so I can still brew up when I want. CarPlay as well, which is cool. Well, I can see why people grow on DAFs. It's definitely a driver's cab, this. And I hate to diss Scania. And I'll say this minus the next gen. The next gen is obviously the massive improvement. And the criticisms I'm about to say about Scania, about the cab in comparison to this, is more based on the top line, our line side, not the next gen whatsoever. Here we go, the horse is on today. Fonsant said they've got quite a white cab, I don't think they appreciated this is a big truck. hunting on today so got everybody sort of chilling out waiting around a little bit chaos down here but I have nothing against fox hunting personally so you know it's, all, it's actually a very and I know some people who may watch this might have the opposite opinion so don't get irate that I have this opinion it's my own personal opinion that fox hunting is you know it is justifiable it gives the fox a chance you know I mean they're not obviously doing it they have to do trail hunting now but I find it such a shame that, you know, they can't actually do what they're meant to be doing. And what these people who wanted the ban and obviously got the ban through did realise that a lot of dogs have had to be put down because of that. A lot of them. And it's hit farmers really hard. Because, you know, they're having to go out more with the guns now. And guns are dangerous. If a mistake happens to a gun, and there's no chance of the fox then with a gun, as long as the farm is a good shot, the fox is next to zero chance. Which in some ways is a very efficient way of dealing with it. <laughs> and foxes are vermin in the countryside. And the problem is, because we have so many foxes now, they're going into the cities. And yet, we're having more issues in the countryside because of foxes will take young lambs, anything they can get their hands on. Well, not literally their hands, but the teeth on. You know, I'm sorry I'm going to go on a little bit of spill here, but I find it such a shame because you know, fox hunting was like the perfect equality of dealing with foxes. It was efficient at dealing with foxes, but equally with the fit foxes could get away. Not, you know, it, gave, it basically gives the chance, a fox a chance. It does honestly have a chance of getting away, and they do get away. But at the same time, it's it's keeping dogs. I forgot the type type of dog it is, but yet those dogs are bred to do, and they are the in the nat natural instincts are there to hunt down foxes. Now, if you like it or not, that's what it is in their nature. That is what they do. You know. I suppose you know. I bought. I've been brought up sort of around the countryside, and I'm not full on countryfied, but. I am aware of some of the issues within the countryside. And it's all very well saying all oh, the foxes look cute and they're all so cruel. It's really, you know, out in the countryside everything is cruel. Nature is cruel. You know, animals will hunt animals if you like it or not. Owls will eat mice. You know, foxes will eat anything more or less that they can physically acquire. You know. Who says about about the sheep who get or lambs who get, you know, taken by them? Oh, what about their whites? 
But then let's stop it there. I don't want to go a big spiel there. That, that was me. You know, this is obviously going to be a bit of a chat video. I do apologise, as I said, if your opinion is the other side, you have more than enough right to be your opinion saying it's cool to have foxes. You know, I, I can see why you might see that, but I'm seeing it from the perspective of practicality, real life, you know, and it does affect farmers and the livestock at the end of the day. And farmers do care, honestly care about the animals, seriously, they do. I know well, there is a big room out there they don't. They have to be a little bit disconnected because they are in the business of, you know, raising animals up to either produce products of either way through natural products they produce, natural milk, wool, then you got obviously the meat side. I know it sounds nasty what I'm saying here, and it might be a bit, you know, certainly if you're vegetarian, not very, but it's that's the truth of the matter. That is really is the truth of the matter. I don't want to go any further in, into details on that side because I know it's not very stomachable for some people. But I will have a touch upon it just so you know where I'm coming from. You know, and was speaking to farmers and seeing the effects in the countryside and the effects of farmers on the financial side, which if they're not financially plausible, they can't run the farm, they can't feed the ca animals or maintain the crops, you know, it's a nasty circle. And because a lot of the bureaucracy bans and all that have come in, it's, it's hit them hard. Same as within the industry as well, you know. It's all very well bringing in like new environmental stuff saying you must have the latest brand new truck otherwise you can't go to certain places anymore. But you know, I think people forget the companies don't have an unlimited budget. You know, they're not charities. You know, but yeah, this, this go down the big deep hole isn't it? I don't want to go any further because we could go on about this for days on end, couldn't we? But you know what my view is on fox hunting there. I'm not preaching you must love it, you must, but it is, it is almost a key thing for the countryside. So it's been done for hundreds of years, and now we've stopped it, and now we're seeing the consequences of stopping it. But it is what it is at the end of the day. It's a touchy subject for some when really it should be a touchy subject. It should be one that we should be realistic with. You know, I'm not calling to wipe out foxes. No, we're far from it. But it was, in like any sort of predator, you know, environment, you know, prey always has to have a predator, otherwise the prey will overproduce. So, you know, it's like anything. You know, if you have too much of anything, it can be bad. And, you know, in, in the world, in the wilds, that's how how it works. It's you know, it's it 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 is a mean world, and you know, it would be all very nice if it's all fluffy and you know, no, nothing ate anything. But <laughs> it is what it is. You know, if you like it or not. And animals aren't going to all go vegetarian overnight. <laughs> And what about the predators' rights, as they would say? But yeah, it is what it is. After 300 yards, turn left. Let's go back to trucking, because that's what the channel's about. It's not about <laughs> every, all the politics. But I, I will go into politics here and there. So, and bear in mind, it's just my opinion. I'm just getting my opinion across a wee bit here and there, and I don't mean it, you know, to rub it in. If you, have, if you have a thought on it, keep, if you want to chat and say that I believe in the opposite, as long as you keep it polite and respectful, comment down below, put your reasons why, your justifications, you know. And you don't have to justify it at the end of the day, because well, everybody, I'm, I'm a big believer in freedom of speech. And it's always good to have another side, your side, 
not after their, you know, what's happening at the moment with the left wing, basically calling to eradicate the right wing and centre. Now I'm more of a centrist, I'm, I lean by centre right. It doesn't mean I'm extreme by saying I'm centre right, it just means I'm a bit nationalist and I believe in my nation. But I believe in fairness, freedom, you know, respect for all races and creeds. I'm a big believer in self-determination at the end of the day. Nationally and by yourself. To be able to decide your own future. How, where you want to work. You know, irrelevant of your sex, colour, creed, or any of that. That's really all irrelevant to me, personally. As long as a person's good at doing their job or doing what they love doing, they don't have to be good at it. Are happy, and you know, it is what it is, you know, let live, as I would say. Oh, let's don't scare the theoretical. We've <laughs> gone into theoretical, haven't we? Now, <laughs> got gone all in that. Now we're getting the hyper deep fog. So, yeah, so be loving the truck, truck fest coming up. Really excited to start polishing the tanks, but I don't expect it to be gleaming. I'll do my best. You never know. Could be. They're coming out pretty well, to be honest. So I managed to do two layers of polishing on the tanks, and most of the aluminium bits I want to polish up, just back, back where we're getting loaded. And at least my traffic is working in my sat nav system now as well, which is good. So yet again, I do apologise, I've been away for a while. I've just been really mental. I mean, I've been on holidays, had a new motorbike, everything at once. And I've just been, I have done a bit of filming, but just haven't had time to edit it. And it, it, I've got a new laptop now, which I can try and start editing in the week, where possible. I've been very lax this week, but primarily because I'm still moving into this truck in a way, settling in it. And that's why I'm not gonna do a truck review slash show around just yet. I only do it till I'm a hundred percent happy with with her. I mean she's only just this is quite a steep hill and even the 580 would you know only do about 30 at this hill thereabouts. And to be honest it's doing about tray five so actually it's not doing that bad. And bear in mind, I should have probably knocked it into uh, manual, not manual mode, into our of eco mode. And we might be doing maybe slightly better now. I mean, it's the lowest has been about 20. And we're fully, we're fully gross at the moment. Go ahead, keep lift. The fuel, it's very fuel efficient, this thing as well. It's. Into that really what I call that bright fog. <laughs> it's like you want to put your sunglasses on, but you can't because it's still dark. <laughs> After 700 yards, turn left. Yeah, so hopefully, you've liked the looks of the inside of the cab, what you can see of it so far. Hopefully, the angle's okay, it needs a bit of adjusting, I know. I've also ordered myself a mirrorless camera so I can do a bit better wearing the truck stuff. I mean, it's a bit more nerve-wracking when we go tr past trucks like that. <laughs> it's a bit wider. We do also have the mirror guards on. I don't know if I'm going to polish those up. Or have to see. But they are a bit awkward to get to polish. I might just keep them highly cleaned. But we'll see. Certainly for truck fest. I'll polish the tank up as best I can in a few bits and bobs. <sighs> yeah, it would look cool polished, I think. Sorry for the buzzer. It's just picking up the curb. And it'll pick up the, uh, the lights and the poles and all that in a minute. 
I said it's very relaxing this cab, very quiet as well, and it's very deceptive on speed. You're actually a lot faster than you actually think in this, because you're so higher up, and it's so quiet, it's very hard to judge. I'm getting used to it now, you know, but as I said, it's like anything, you've got to get used to it. But because it's so quiet, you're, you're kind of disconnected in a way, and in some ways it's good. You know, I, I can, yeah, no, it's not a complaint either. And it just takes some getting used to. Which you know, I think I'm almost there with it now. But it's so much nicer to be in such a quiet, relaxing environment. You know, got DAB, got all the toys, got adaptive cruise control. You know, it's got everything you would want as a driver. And if I was own operator, this is the truck I would want. I know I'm. I'm I can say that with reasonable confidence at the moment. I mean, there's still some stuff left out to judgment still, which could change that, that opinion down. But, really, compared to the uh, my last truck, it's a lot better cab. The storage on the truck is a lot better. It has two side covers compared to one on my side. I know, yes, some scanners do have two. Or used to wipe in, but because mine only had one, I can only judge it because it only had one side cupboard. Did have a storage area in the area where it would have been the other storage cupboard, but I never reused it because you had to lift the bed. And lifting the bed in that thing wasn't really all that I was kind of awkward. You had to pull the seats forward, you had to pull the bed out, then you could raise it up. <laughs> With this, I just pulled a lever down here, and the bed will come up on this air. Anything. So I'll even use the stuff I need for the bed. I've even got a pantry drawer, I've got a big massive fridge, I've got a big massive drink hold here, which I actually might need to empty out my whole coffee that I've been saying there. Never mind. Sort that out later. It's taking it easy because it is very extremely foggy. Which a lot of people will drive as if it isn't. And it's quite scary when you think about it, because, you know, by the time you see a danger in this fog, going at normal speed, you probably would be in a lot of trouble. Really careful at those crossroads, because as I said, if somebody's travelling down at normal speed down that road, they may not see me till they can't see us anymore. Well, you know, as soon as they see me, they, there's a good chance that they might not be able to stop going to the side of me. As I said, I've seen a few drivers like that today in the deep fog, and as I said, without lights on as well, and it tends to the people without lights on who do it as well. They'll travel at normal speeds as if everything's normal, they can got full visibility. The window wipers are fairly quiet on this as well compared to what I would call off the Scania. Edge your pass there because of the tractor. <laughs> okay, we're going fairly slow anyway, which is all good. Yeah, so I'm sorry for moaning in this and going on about different subjects. That's just me, I get sidetracked easily. But this is more a chat video to say that I'm back. There'll be more content coming. Obviously on Truck Fest, I'll try and do as much filming as I can. I hopefully have my new camera for that as well. I've got you on my other new camera today, on my Osmo, which will be sort of replacing the GoPro. Because I wasn't really impressed with GoPro, to be honest. For a GoPro, I was impressed. The quality of GoPro is good. But the reliability while filming I know, yes, I can send it back. It probably is just the issue with my one. So watch out, looks like somebody walking. Why are you flashing me? I know there's a weather, but cheers anyway. That's why I'm driving at reduced speed. Think honestly, if you're out in the middle of the countryside in deep fog like this, you sh 
where he's running without running into tra traffic, which he should be doing. They can't see what's coming at him. It's more of a the chaps who deliver to one of our places, it's acknowledging that. Not from our same company, but I still acknowledge other drivers at the end of the day, who I recognise and all that. And if they, even people, drivers I don't overly recognise, they may recognise me for whatever reason, maybe through the channel, you never know. But we'll see. <laughs> That's the same. But yeah, just so you know what I was waving at, so I know I look a bit odd. Yeah, so hope you've enjoyed this. It's probably about half an hour now or so, anyway, give or take. After from me going on. And yes, we've got truck fest this week. We're well, we've still got coming up. We've got a few holidays coming up shortly. And all that. Nothing to worry about this second. It's still about a few weeks off. To the first one, then the other one's in October. Turn right. Oh yeah, I'm actually very excited about Truck Fest to be honest. I'm sort of buzzing about it. Hopefully, by the sounds of the forecast sounds pretty good. So we're going to probably have a barbecue, both nights maybe. We'll see. We'll do a food shop on the Friday as well. So take a look at it a bit. I don't, I'm not a heavy drinker by no means. But I'll probably take some ciders probably. And that. Glasses, bits and bobs. Take a tent. I'll probably sleep in the truck. I think. I may do the review on the truck or the first look around the truck at Truck Fest. Never know. We'll see. I might film when we go in the do all the faffing about in the Friday, maybe. Just uh, as something, I might see if I upload it or something, oh. maybe if I get some Wi Fi connection or something. We'll see. I'll certainly edit it and get it out as soon as I can. Either way, I might try and do some time lapses for the truck fest. We'll see what I do. Maybe some interesting things we can do. One thing I've been thinking about, which we might need to get a power bank to do it is set a camera on time-lapse mode on top of the truck overlooking the event during the day. Which would be quite interesting actually. It depends where we are parked obviously. But on the catwalk of my trailer, set a camera up there on the tripod obviously full extended Hot there's probably just a smidge he should have flowed down a smidge more before. But no dramas. Still safe. Just got another SD out of Pico Road. Need a little bit to do that. Yeah, so I've got a few ideas for Truck Fest, what to do videoing wise. Nothing mental. As I said, may edit it down there. I've sent the change of details through to Truck Fest, so hopefully that's all good. Also, the person they sent me told me to send the email to anyway, so I emailed them first to check if I was able to change the truck over. I said I just received a few days ago, you know, literally a week before Truck Fest, and I was having a joke from the boss about <laughs> it as well. I was all thinking before, no my luck, I'll get the truck just before Truck Fest. Yeah, so I'll probably leave it there because I think I've gone on and on and on enough. So it's more of a chat video. And to all my new subscribers, I would like to say a massive thank you. It is appreciated as usual to all the, and to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. It, you know, it, it's massively amazing. Need to get a bit better turned over on the channel. Yes, I've neglected it a little bit for about a month and a bit now, not two months. You know, I do apologise. I meant I meant to release more stuff before, but I said I've been way too busy to 
edit it down and upload it and do all that. And, you know, it's, it's just been mental. So I do apologise yet again. Now I didn't mean the gap to be this long. But yeah, there'll be more content com coming. And uh, yes, again, thank you very much. Please uh, comment down below if you have any comments, any ideas, any suggestions. A big SUV. I bet it did seem to last minute there. No lights on whatsoever. Deep fog up here, as you may see. It wasn't like these daylights were going on. That's why I gave him a quick flash to go, Oi, get your lights on. What are you doing, deep fog? Put your lights on. Be seen. Best than not being seen. It, it's what, amongst my pet aids. I know I have many. <laughs> but, that is a serious one. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's very hard to get enforced. It is really, that's irritating. That's why I have some time. I'll call it there before I got more about it. But uh, yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed, you like what you see, and want to see more about my trucking, trucking life, about me and my trucking, please, please subscribe. Hit that bell icon as well for future content releases. As I said, I try to aim to release weekly. I know I've been really bad of late. Um, but we'll get, we'll get back on it. We'll get back on it. As I say. Do, 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 do. crossword, got a crossword, three jump cam. It's quite a busy one at times. And yes, again, thank you very much for watching. And to all those that have subscribed. Um, any ideas, or if you're coming to Truck Fest, feel free to. But probably by the time you've seen this, it may be in over. I'll see if we'll get it up this weekend. But if it's before the Ship to Mallet show, you know, comment down below if you're coming. You know, I will be there. I do not know where I'll be, but I'll be there somewhere. <laughs> so, yet again, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Over and out.